Hello everybody, my name is Daniel, and I gave Detective Pikachu a B. Detective Pikachu comes across like a Pokemon spin-off game, like Pokemon Snap or Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, where there are no gym battles, no Elite Four, no Team Rocket, but the spirit of Pokemon, which centers on the friendships you make, and the adventures you have, all the fun, all that is what Detective Pikachu sinks its teeth into. I think that works best for not just Gen 1ers, but noobs alike. If you're a newcomer to the Pokemon universe, because this has deviated a little bit from the path, the learning curve is minimal, and all the stuff you need to know is in the movie. You'd think, Detective Pikachu, that's a really weird idea to introduce people to Pokemon with, but in the sense of Hollywood, it's Roger Rabbit for the Pokemon generation. Introducing this mix of live action and CGI is a nice way to kind of bridge the gap, so to speak. Now, it doesn't reach the heights of something like a Roger Rabbit and a Zootopia. For context, I would give those A pluses. Ultimately, I found there was so much creativity, not only in the inspirations from the film noir, but also the Easter eggs for Pokemon fans, and also the pretty decent fairy tale for kids that I thought, as a package, for something that had so many writers attached to it, this really works well. Speaking of the film noir, I love how playful Rob Letterman and his crew are with this, where they'll give you a lot of strong shadows and high contrast. Pikachu will talk in the, you know, 30s and 40s dialogue here. Yeah, look at these seeds, yeah, egg crema. Even something that's kind of playing off of Blade Runner a little bit, the Asian-inspired decor with the neon. There even is a scene where they're watching TV and there's a noir movie playing in the background. So as like a quick primer for kids about what film noir is, I think Detective Pikachu works pretty damn well. I also love the supporting characters that feel ripped right from a Pokemon game, whether it's Ken Watanabe's super intense Pokemon Chief, or my favorite, Lucy, played by Catherine Newton, this plucky reporter that needs to get the scoop no matter what. In the Pokemon games, these side characters are just side characters. You kind of meet them for a quick purpose and then move on with the story. So their characterization is totally built off of what their title is. It would be very easy to go into the video game and see you battling junior reporter Lucy, who is all about the scoop and who whispers into her tape recorder that Tim is a hostile witness and blah, 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 blah. And just, I really love that kind of playful pastiche of the detective genre that feels very much in line with the Pokemon world at large. The movie centers on Tim, this 20-something, who's told that his estranged detective dad is presumed dead in a car crash. So he goes to Rhyme City, goes to his father's apartment, and finds his father's partner, a Pikachu. And the Pikachu can speak English, and only Tim can understand it, and that drives him a little nuts. The Pikachu tells Tim that his father was investigating some kind of shady stuff, and if they solve that mystery, then they will likely find the father, who Pikachu can't explain why, but he feels that he's still alive. As for Justice Smith, I did not enjoy him in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but here, I found him to be kind of a jack-of-all-trades. He works really well as an everyman. Kind of the beginning of the movie, if you're new to Pokemon, he works well as an audience avatar, kind of introducing you to this world. But as the movie gets more cartoony and crazy, he can also lean into that side, and he can play off of these over-the-top supporting characters well. He also handles the emotional stuff, too, the difficulties of losing a father. I've thought he handled that with some emotional maturity and depth and sincerity that really worked for something that could just so easily be a Flavor of the Week kids film. So, let's talk about our furry buddy, Pikachu, who is just a wonderful CGI creation. So much texture, so much life, so much detail. I love the way the movie has him interact with Tim, maybe jumping on his shoulder. And this also is a credit to Smith's acting. Whenever Pikachu jumps on his shoulder, you see him kind of dip his shoulder a little bit with the weight. It feels natural, and you can tell that most of the budget and most of the effort really came in developing their relationship, which totally is the purpose of the story, 
but also that kind of illusion. If Pikachu doesn't work, then the movie doesn't work. As for the rest of the world of Pokemon, we get a good balance, and it's about 50-60 Pokemon. Not so much that it's overwhelming, but not so little that the world seems empty. You do notice a couple repeats throughout, and it's kind of interesting to see how the movie reckons with these extra Pokemon. You'll see a lot of close-up shots of our main characters with some Pokemon blurred in the background. You'll see Pokemon from far away. Although there was a shot of some Bufalon that legit looked live action for half a second and it freaked me out. Uh, for the most part, the designs do this nice mix between the in-game designs and a sense of realism. Like Charizard the Dragon has scales. You don't see the scales in the game, but anyone with a decent sense knows that a dragon has scales, so there you go. As the movie moves along, the kind of film noir dissipates and it kind of leans into more CGI heavy sci-fi action. And that's to mixed effect. I don't think the movie had the grandest budget in the world. So there are some shots where they're running away from stuff and it looks very green screeny, you know? Honestly, most of my complaints just come from the third act, where for some people it just may be too weird for them to get into, especially given the beginning of the film. But for me, the bonkersness was so just audacious that I kind of loved it. I wish we could have relished more in sort of the final battle, but ultimately it was still kind of like a nice teaser for what could come. Some of the character elements are a little weird to wrap your head around at the end, but I kind of operate on this film as fairy tale logic. So as a fairy tale in, in a world where there can be giant walking tongues slobbering around or like a dragon can shoot fire. The fact that there is a dragon in this world, you kind of just roll with the territory and you buy it as is. So to wrap this up, I'm going to talk about some kind of fan-oriented stuff. No spoilers, but just some stuff that since I've been a lifelong fan of Pokemon since 1998, when I saw the movie... Because I'm a fan, it led me down certain rabbit holes that I think might influence your viewing. Some elements, the way they play out, kind of resemble games like Pokemon Coliseum or Pokemon Red and Blue. And so I'm thinking, oh, is the movie going in this direction? And that would influence my way of thinking, and the movie would either reward that or kind of branch off of that idea. If you're a fan of the games, you'll understand that maybe, like, because of this particular line, this is maybe canon with this game, or you like to see how other regions of the Pokemon universe interact with this and how seamlessly they really are translated into. It does feel like Rhyme City could be a future hub or a future city you can visit in a main series game. Maybe they have Rhyme City in the game for the Switch. I don't know. Nothing's been confirmed, but yeah, it'd be fun to dream. So let me know what you thought of Detective Pikachu in the comments below. If you liked the video, go ahead and like. Share the video, subscribe, and ring that notification bell because I don't have as rigid a schedule as other YouTubers, so you really need to know when I put out another video. But until next video, thank you very much for watching, and take care.